insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 83, Self-Esteem Revisited. I am your host, Joseph Whalen, and I'm joined by my intelligent and confident co-host, Madison Whalen. Hi, everyone. How you doing today, Maddie? I'm doing pretty well. How was, uh, how was this week, your second full week of school? Well, the school stress finally kicked in. Yeah, I kind of <sighs> knew that was going to happen. Yep, um... Technology issues were kind of um, a main factor in the stress as well, so. Yeah. Well, you know, working in the technology field, uh, I can certainly vouch for the fact that no matter how hard you try and how much you plan and how much you test, technical issues will always continue to crop up. Hopefully, as you guys go through the next few weeks, things will smooth out a little bit. They did make an announcement that they're extending the remote schooling for your school for another month, right? So, not that that's going to affect you because you were going to be working, you're going to be homeschooling for the duration, at least for right now. But that may be motivation enough for the teachers and the technology staff at the school to redouble their efforts to try to smooth things out. But that's not what we're talking about today, is it? Nope. What are we talking about today? Self-esteem. So this was one that you decided you wanted to revisit. What was your reasoning for wanting to revisit this topic? Well, first off, self-esteem, it was one of the podcasts I had in mind. It was one of our older podcasts that, um, and we had already revisited um, Braces, and I'm thinking, and I'm thinking about other ones, and self-esteem came up, and I had actually watched, well, listened to um, our self-esteem podcast, and I realized a lot has changed from um, then and now. Yeah, so, so one of the things that we wanted to do was to kind of do an update on where you are <clears throat> from a self-esteem standpoint, uh, what progress that you've made, but I wanted to expound a little bit as well. So we're going to be talking about some more uh, advanced concepts of self-esteem called the uh, six pillars of self-esteem, just to kind of reinforce what we talked about last time. Uh, But we'll recap where you are and how things are going and and go from there. Uh, Before we do that, though, I do want to uh, Invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. You can get us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. <clears throat> Pretty much any of your podcast aggregators will have our shows. If you are looking for the shows, our video version of the podcast are listed under Insights into Things. And our audio versions are listed under Insights into Teens. We would also invite folks to contact us, reach out to us directly. You can get us by email at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at insights underscore things. We now are on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. You can also get high res versions of the show, uh, video versions of the show on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. And if you are an Amazon Prime subscriber, you do get a free monthly subscription that you can subscribe on Twitch. We would uh, invite you to do that as well. Any, Any subscriptions we get to support the show. Audio versions of the show can be found at podcast.insightsintoteens.com. 
We are on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast. And finally, you can get links to all of our social media content and all of our shows on our website at www.insightsintothings.com. Now, with all that out of the way, are we ready to start the show? Yep. All right. So, what is self-esteem? So, this was a definition that we took from Psychology Today during the original Self-Esteem podcast. Why don't you tell us, and we'll start off with that, why don't you tell us what we define as self-esteem? Well, um... You can just read the definition. Okay, so, confidence in one's value as a human being is a precious physiological resource and generally a high positive... A highly positive factor in life. It is corrected with achievement, good relationships. Correlated. And, sorry. It is correlated with achievement, good relationships, and satisfaction. Process, possessing. Possessing a uh, little self-regard can lead people to become depressed, to fall short in their potential, or to tolerate abusive situations in relationships. And that is that is still the definition that we're going to go with here because I think it's pretty all-encompassing when we talk about self-esteem in teens. Let's talk briefly how that definition and how your status was when we did the last podcast. Can you recall what your self-esteem status was back then? Well, listening to how I was talking back then, it seemed as though I didn't have very good self-esteem when we were doing the podcast because um, we'd gone over the positive side effects of good self-esteem and the warning signs of low self-esteem. And I seemed to fall have a lot of negative traits and not very many positive traits. Yeah, yeah. So I think we've come a long way since then. Before we get into the... Uh review of where you are and the progress that you've made, I did want to talk a little bit about the six pillars of self-esteem, which is kind of, it's a philosophy and it's uh, a psychological set of terms that, that the industry uses. And this comes from a website called experiencelife.com. And they, they talk about self-esteem as not being an idea or an affirmation. They talk about it being a practice. What determines the level of self-esteem is what the individual does. So it's really an actionable type of thing. It's nice to talk about ideas and memorize inspiring words and get an intellectual understanding of something, but it's what we do that leads to our own self-esteem. So you can read all the books and listen to the podcast. But if you're not doing the things that you need to do to uplift your self-esteem, none of that matters, right? So they go on to say that a practice implies a discipline of acting in a certain way and over and over again acting that way consistently. Honesty is another practice. You know, when you are always honest, you're honest consistently. It's a policy that you go by. It's a personal philosophy that you adhere to, and that's how you lead your life. Self-esteem is the same thing when you take actionable intent to improve your self-esteem. And I say, let's remember, it's not about memorizing inspiring words or having stimulating conversations. It's about practicing and living our core truths. So if you believe that you have self-worth, and if you take actions, consistent with that, then that helps to build your self-confidence. And I think that's something that you've experienced since the last podcast is that even without talking about the six pillars of self-esteem in the past, you've taken what we talked about last time and you've applied it to real life. You know, you have that level of confidence. You have and you can hear it just in how you speak in the podcast and how you assert yourself in, in general, you know, you understand how valuable your opinion is and how valuable your input is. 
And that's something that, that really feeds into your self-esteem. What do you think about that? Yeah, I definitely would agree. I definitely think that um, feeling strength of your opinion and feeling that your opinion matters is definitely like something that is definitely directly linked towards self-esteem because then you're not downgrading yourself saying like, oh, maybe what I'm thinking is wrong or bad or no one would want to hear it because then that can lead to lower to lower your self-esteem and having the direct correlation to my opinion matters or what I say does matter is definitely um some an example of positive self-esteem absolutely and and the first pillar of self-esteem that they mentioned is something they call living consciously. <clears throat> and they say this means that we're present in each moment and aware of what's going on inside of us as well as around us. We don't ignore information that we don't like, and we pay attention to our emotion. People who are living consciously are able to focus on what's happening now and to stop thinking about the past and the future. So the the gist of this is that you're living in the moment. You're aware of how you feel. You're aware of how others perceive you, and you deal with that here and now. You're not worrying about what happened last year, you know, because you didn't have the same level of self-confidence. You're not looking forward to next year and, and basically psyching yourself out. You're You're living in the moment, and you're dealing with things as you get them. So even if you get constructive criticism, you don't ignore that because that's how we learn and how we improve. You know, we accept the fact that we all have flaws and there's always room for improvement. Do you think at this point in time that you live consciously in the moment or is your mind wandering back and forth? I mean, I'm somewhat in the middle. I do normally like to stay in the moment and work on problems that I'm dealing with now. But on occasions, I do kind of have the flashbacks to the past and how I would have handled things back then versus how I handle them now. And then, you know, looking up to the future, seeing what are my actions now going, how are my actions now going to affect my future. It's sort of more of an existential thing for me, but I do try and live in the moment most of the time. Well, and I think the method that you've described there is really probably a good blend because you look reflectively at the past to understand the lessons that you've learned. And then you impose that type of view on the future so that you can anticipate how you need to change. Because we all change as we get older. You, you anticipate how you change. So I think that's really a very mature approach to how you look at things. The second pillar uh, that they talk about here is self-acceptance. Self-acceptance is when we accept ourselves unconditionally. We're compassionate toward ourselves, even when we don't admire our own feelings or decisions. And these factors don't change our respect for ourselves. So the important thing here, and I think this is probably where you've made the most progress so far, and that is... Accepting who you are, flaws and everything, and being compassionate with yourself. You've traditionally been very hard on yourself, especially when it comes to academics. And I think this pillar kind of brings home the fact that you need to push yourself, but you need to do it in a way that doesn't degrade yourself. And that's where the self-acceptance comes in. And I think you've made progress here. How do you think you've you've done so far? Well, I'm going to talk a bit about like how I accepted my flaws. Back then, I knew that I was bad at sports and I felt bad about it because I because I just felt as though no one would like me if I wasn't good at sports because I was always the odd one out. I was always normally the last one picked and I would sometimes get injured, and I never really liked that. Now, I completely accept the fact that I'm not good at sports, and I really, and I'm just thinking, like, I'm not going to have a career in sports, so what? 
sports. I mean, I know it's important to be, um, and I know it's important to be, um, athletic and, um, at least try to move around. And I do that, but I don't have to do sports for it. I can just like go for a jog around the neighborhood. I don't have to throw a football or play soccer or anything like that. I've accepted that I don't, that I'm not good at sports and that I don't normally like sports. And that's okay. As long as I, as long as I don't, um, degrade myself for not being good at sports, it's fine. And I think that's a very good point because at one point in time, it wasn't so much a dislike of sports that you had. It was almost a fear of sports, whether it's a fear of treatment by your peers or fear of getting hurt. You had a couple of experiences playing sports that had a very lasting impression on you. And you've managed to overcome those, accept your limitations, but also accept the fact that you have to participate in these activities and you're going to do your best. And you know that you you have no interest in pursuing a career in sports, but you'll still do what you need to do in order to get your class grades. So I, I think that was a significant leap forward in where you were a year ago. So kudos to you for that. So that's our first two pillars down. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back and we'll finish up with the rest. For over seven years, the Second Sith Empire has been the premier community guild in the online game Star Wars The Old Republic. With hundreds of friendly and helpful active members, a weekly schedule of nightly events, annual guild meet and greets, and an active community both on the web and on Discord. The Second Civ Empire is more than your typical gaming group. We're family. Join us on the Star Forge server for nightly events such as operations, flashpoints, world boss hunts, Star Wars trivia, guild lottery, and much more. Visit us on the web today at www.thesecondsithempire.com. Welcome back. We are talking self-esteem revisited today. I'm here with Madison, and uh, we're kind of taking a pulse check on the progress that you've made since our last ep uh, podcast over a year ago on self-esteem. So we're talking the six pillars of self-esteem. We got the first two down. Uh, our first two pillars were living consciously and self-acceptance. Next, we're going to talk about self-responsibility. So self-responsibility means recognizing that we're in charge of our own choices and actions, and no one else can make them for us, change them, or fix them for us. We don't blame others for our own choices, and we don't expect others to make us happy. That's really something that we're responsible for. Let me just ask you right off the bat, do you agree with that? philosophy. I mean, yeah. So recognizing that you're in charge of your own choices means that you're not going to let anyone control you, manipulate you, or anything like that. And it also means that unless you're okay with it, you won't let people help you when you're down, and you can do it by yourself. That's true. And as you get older and you mature through your teen years into your adult years, that responsibility increases. You have more choices to make. You have more responsibility that you're invested with. And this is just something, this self-responsibility is something that's going to continue to grow. So grasping that early on, like you have, is a great head start in the direction that you need to go. The next pillar we talk about is self-assertiveness. This is the practice of honoring our needs and interests of expressing them in appropriate ways. We know that it's okay to have needs and that it's acceptable to let others know about them 
in a healthy way. So this is about not making demands of other people, but understanding that there are certain needs that you have, whether it's emotionally from a friendship, whether it's materialistically for survival needs, you know, whatever it is, you acknowledge that you have these needs. We don't, we don't suppress these needs. We don't push these down because we are embarrassed about them or we don't want to impose on others. And we articulate those needs to others in a way that is amicable. You know, for instance, in a relationship, you know, I'm mommy and daddy are married. We've been married for some time now. There's needs that come up in that relationship, whether it's emotional support, financial needs that have to come up, you know, whatever it is, we communicate, we talk about it, and we work through all of those issues. And that's really the key. The fact that you accept those needs. Now, right now, I have to assume that there aren't that many needs that you have that you need to express at this point in time. But as you get older, that's going to change. What are, you, what are your thoughts? Do you think you're self-assertive? I mean, yeah. So whenever I need to come to you guys as my parents for, like, um, some type of answer to a problem or just emotional support, I can... I feel like I can come up to you guys and ask you about it, and I don't feel like I need to hide it. Yeah, and that's important. You know, being being comfortable doing that is very important because it, that's driving communication. So the next pillar of self-esteem we talk about is living purposefully. This is all about your goals. So if we're living purposefully, we set goals, we make plans that will allow us to reach them, and we live with these goals in mind. And I, and I think it's important that everyone have realistic goals that we set throughout our lives, whether it's, you know, saving for that special hoodie that we want to get or going on vacation or uh, achieving a certain goal like scholastically, like you want to score straight A's, or you want to pass your SATs, or you want to get into a good college. Having these goals is what drives us. If we don't have goals, there's, there's very little for us to push for, and, and there's very little incentive at that point in time. What goals do you have right now that you think you're pushing for? I mean... Probably the main goal was to pass school with somewhat decent grades, and um, definitely beforehand, I kind of took it a little too hard for the goals, and I pushed myself a little too hard. Now I'm trying to ease up on myself, saying that it's okay, just let it be, you can fix it. Yeah, and that's, that's good. I mean, again, it's one of those things that you have to kind of accept what your limitations are and not push yourself too hard. Uh, we talked about burnout a few podcasts back and, and how being driven is a good thing, but being driven to the point of burning yourself out is not a good thing because then you can't achieve your goals and you become a, almost a detriment to those around you because they then have to try and pick you up. So I think that's a very good interpretation of living purposefully. The last pillar that we talk about here is personal integrity. And we've talked about this from a number of different perspectives through the podcast, uh, from trust and honesty and what was the one we had done uh, recently with personal responsibility. So integrity comes in different forms. So personal integrity means that we have convictions about what behavior is important and appropriate. And we keep our behavior in line with that standard. So if, if your standard is that lying is not good, then we don't lie. We don't steal. We don't break the rules. We don't do things that we wouldn't want people doing to us. You might summarize this pillar by saying we walk the talk. Have you ever heard that phrase before? Um, not really. 
So the concept behind that is that if I'm going to tell you how to act appropriately, I have to, it has to be more than words. I have to set that example. So if I tell you don't lie, then I can't lie to you. And I can't lie to others because then that's reflective on the philosophy. You know, it makes me a hypocrite at that point. So personal integrity is really holding up to these standards and these rules that we have for what we think is appropriate. Now, that unfortunately doesn't mean everyone else, you know, holds up to those themselves. So there are people that you're going to find that lack the same integrity that you have throughout life. And it's going to be difficult when you have to deal with people like that. Let me ask you, do you think that you have an, a level of integrity that you're comfortable with at this point in time? I mean, yeah, I know stuff that I shouldn't, shouldn't do, and I try to abide by it as well as I can. So I definitely say that I would have some, um, some good personal integrity. Yeah, and I think that's really what it comes down to. It's knowing the difference between right and wrong. Adhering to that, you know, if you don't think you should, if you don't want people to be rude to you, then you shouldn't be rude to other people. That doesn't mean other people aren't going to be rude to you, but you have to lead by example. Yeah. If you don't want people to lie to you, don't lie. If you don't want people to steal from you, don't steal. I mean, it's, it's really fundamental basics, but you don't have the luxury of imposing that integrity on other people. You kind of have to accept the fact that if they don't learn by your example, it's their loss at that point in time. So that was the six pillars of self-esteem. I, I wanted to kind of expound on that. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll come back, and we're going to do a quick review of what the signs of self-esteem are, what the warning signs of low self-esteem are, and then we'll sort of take a review as to where you're at right now since the last time we talked about this topic. Insights into Entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. We're talking self-esteem today, self-esteem revisited. This was an earlier podcast that we had done some time back, and we're kind of doing a review of what it means to have health, healthy self-esteem and uh, a review of where Maddie has come since the last episode that we did. So Maddie, why don't you tell us what some of the signs of high self-esteem are? Well, some of the signs of high self-esteem are confidence, the ability to say no, a positive outlook, accepting your strengths and weaknesses, not letting the negatives affect your perspective, and the ability to express your needs. So how many of those would you say you can exhibit yourself? So for confidence, I feel pretty self-confident. Um, I understand that there are my, I do have limitations, but if I need to put my, push myself a little bit further those limitations, I can, and I feel confident that I can, that I will be able to succeed. Of course, I'm not always going to succeed, and I can also expect that, but I can expect to try my hardest. Now, are there areas that you think you lack self-confidence right now? Um. Like, academically, you clearly are very self-confident. But how about from a, a social standpoint? Do you, do you have self-confidence in your ability to be social and to, 
you know, interact with peers your age and have conversations and stuff like that? Or is there a lack of confidence there? Well, there I'm kind of lacking. Um, I definitely have this weird, th- I definitely, and it kind of correlates into academics as well, because the teachers are always open to ha- um, you having questions. And sometimes I have a question that hasn't been asked by anyone else. And um, I just think like, what if my question is what if my questions kind of well what if my what if I shouldn't ask this question what if like they'll think you're what if I should already know this or what if it's or what if anyone's gonna make fun of me for it or anything like that and um not academically I kind of don't like talking to people who I don't know I mean like people who like deliver our food the people who deliver the food to our door like i immediately run away to mommy like mommy there's people here who brought the food because i just i i just am not very good socially with strangers but with my friends i definitely know that i'm much more open and if you knew me well you'd see that i wasn't exactly shy around you i'd be very open i also talk a lot so so that's that's probably an area that we could improve on in the future then yeah how about the ability to say no do you feel comfortable saying no when people ask too much of you um yeah i would say so like if one of my friends told me asked me to do something that i kind of felt uncomfortable with or i thought you guys would be mad at me for doing, I would be able to say no and explain my reasoning to them, and hopefully they'd understand. Okay. Do you think that you have a positive outlook on life? I mean, I definitely realized that I had a very bad outlook when we first started. I had had a much more negative outlook. I thought that every day was going to be a bad day and that it would just stay the same cycle. Um, now I'm slightly more positive, even though you know everything going on. Um, but I'm still trying to stay positive. Um, I'm glad that we're all safe and that I get to spend more time with you guys now and that I get to spend time with the cats as well. I definitely have a slightly more positive outlook, although, you know, school stress has gotten, um, in the way of that as well. But I'm still trying to stay as positive as I can. Um, and saying that there is, and saying that we only see the positives when we're in, when, when we're, when they're discussed, when like all around us is negatives. Well, and that is a, that's a kind of a time we live in right now. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on right now that you kind of have to hold on to those positives in order to get through tough times like this. So I think we've already established in our earlier discussion the fact that you do accept your strengths and weaknesses. But how about letting the negatives affect your perspective? How are you at at fending off a lot of these negative thoughts? There's a lot of negativity these days with COVID and politics and everything else. How, How does that affect you? Well, having it directly in my face doesn't exactly help. And I can definitely feel some negative emotions. But the thing that I normally do to block them off is doing something that I, that I enjoy, like drawing, movie making, creating characters, watching videos, playing games. Honestly, although they're kind of distractions, they make me happy, and I can block out all the negatives when I'm doing something I enjoy. That's a very good thing to, to have, that, that ability to hold on to that. Yeah, and even back then, when I had a bad day at school, I'd go to you guys, we'd talk, and then I'd probably just sit in my room for a bit and just play, s- and then watch some videos or play games, and that would normally help, although, you know, there were still a lot of negatives going on that they would sometimes be down my door, but, yeah. you know. And I don't think you have any issues expressing your needs. You're not a particularly needy individual. Not really, no. But when there is something that you need or want, you don't have a problem expressing that. So I think we can pretty much check all the boxes there, even though we might have some, you know, work on some of those. Uh, you seem to exhibit all the signs of, of high self-esteem. Why don't you tell us a little bit about what some of the warning signs of low self-esteem are? 
So for the warning signs, we kind of have like the opposing sides of more the positives, which were a negative outlook, a lack of confidence. You tend to focus on your weaknesses, feeling of shame or anxiety, trouble accepting positive feedback, feeling others are better than you, and fearing fa- failure. And those are a lot of those are one to one correlations to some of the positive outlooks. Feelings of shame and anxiety. We've done a podcast on anxiety in the past, and we'll probably revisit that in the near future. But do you think that you fall into that category? Do you have any feelings of shame or anxiety at this point? I mean, sometimes when I do, um, when I sometimes don't succeed when I'm doing something and I spend a lot of time on, I do, I do feel negative feelings from that, but then I try to look more on the positive side in order to not feel as much anxiety towards it as I can. Um, but there are some times when I'm like trying to go to sleep that I do have some existential crises that I probably shouldn't say because then everyone else will be thinking about them and I'd not be the only one. Uh, but, you know. Well, how about accepting positive feedback? Because I know that used to be something that kind of was a difficult thing for you was to accept the praise that was heaped upon you. Uh, how do you deal with that now? I absolutely accepted it. Um... Although I'm I'm somewhat shy to share some of this stuff, when I realize that people like it, it definitely boosts my confidence that, hey, I made something good. Good job, me. That kind of thing. I'm definitely okay with accepting positive feedback, although I still sometimes have the times where I'd fear negative um, feedback, which is why I don't normally show a lot of the stuff that I have due to slight fear of the negatives, but most of the time people are pretty positive with what I do. That's good. That's very important. Do you have any feelings that others are better than you? Um, well, yeah. I mean, there's always going to be someone better than you, and you're probably not going to reach, like, the perfect point. But you got to understand, not everyone's perfect, even the people who seem to be better than you. You are okay, and you're good enough. You don't need to be better than everyone else, and you don't, and you shouldn't feel as though you're worse than everyone else. You're in the medium, and you don't have to be better than anyone. You can be just fine where you are. Good outlook. What about failure? Do you fear failing? Um, I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would pretty much feel fear failing, but it's important to understand that mistakes or failure can be learned from and like you always say you love mistakes because you learn more from your mistakes than you would ever do with your successes so that is true so yeah so i think i I think there's a good mix i think there's certainly progress since our last podcast on uh, self-esteem i think you've come a long way Uh, it's demonstrated just in your self-confidence when, when you see you uh, on camera, on the podcast, you have a very confident, outgoing personality now. And I think that's, that's significant. But we're all a work in progress. And, and certainly we can all improve moving forward. Let's take a quick break and we'll come back. And we'll, we'll see it where you've come since the last podcast on this subject. So, on a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the highest, where would you rate your self-esteem at the time of our original episode, which was episode 5? Well, seeing how it was probably one of a pretty bad times for my self-esteem when we made it, I'd say 3.5. Okay. Because... I mean, I did have some self-confidence, but I was also very anxious about a lot of things back then. So what were some of the factors that influenced that level of self-esteem at the time? Well, a lot of it was fear of my academics and the fear of sports. Um, Academics because I wasn't... 
because I was getting lower grades than I had before, and I was really scared that I wouldn't be able to get as high marks as I could have. And honestly, I was putting a lot of, like, pressure on myself, saying, like, you need to do better, or this isn't good enough, or anything like that. Um, and the fear of sports was also kind of correlated to the fear of others. Um, so fear of sports, I had much more of a fear of sports than a dislike of sports because I was always shown to be an odd one out. I wasn't as competitive as everyone else was, and I just feared getting hurt from there because it had happened to me multiple times before. Understandable. And another main thing of it was the people, and... I had a fear that I wasn't good enough for um, everyone else and that I needed to be better. And I just had a negative outlook saying that that was never going to happen. So going back to that same scale of 1 to 10, where do you think you fit now on that scale? Um, I'd say 7.5 or 8. Okay, well, that's a significant improvement. Mm-hmm. What are some of the factors that help influence that and get you to that point? Well, definitely the support from you guys. You guys were very supportive and you wanted me to and you wanted to help boost my self-esteem. And a lot of it was, like we said before, the actions I had to take myself. I realized that, okay, I need to understand my limits. I need to understand where and I need to understand that I need to have the ability to know my strengths and weaknesses. I knew that I was bad at sports, but I also knew I was good at creating stories, characters, and drawing. So I focused more on my strengths, but I did look at my weaknesses and went to accept them. I understood I wasn't good at sports, and I understood that I probably won't be good at sports, and I know I could have practiced on it, but I didn't, I didn't even enjoy sports, really, so... I thought that it was just okay that I wasn't good at sports. And then with the academics, it was okay. I know my limits, and if I push myself, I'm going to get stressed out. I need to work the problem. Okay. I think that's that sums it up very well. So, given where you were a year ago and where you are now and the progress that you made, Is there any advice that you could give to someone who may be in the same position you were a year ago? Well, let's see. So, if you are struggling with the academics, I'd say that you need to understand your limits there. You need to understand that you might not get perfect grades, but you need to at least try your best. You It might be hard for some subjects, and you should at least try to have the confidence to ask the teacher. I'm still struggling with that myself, but I'm working on it a little, but I've gotten better. For any of your activities that you're not good at, understand your strengths and weaknesses, and accept them. You can look at your strengths and say, oh, I'm good at this or this, and I really enjoy them, but I really am not good at this, and I don't really enjoy it. And understand that you don't have to enjoy everything, and you don't have to enjoy things that you're bad at. You just have to accept that you, you just have to accept that you don't like it, and you don't have to do it unless, you know, it's for school or something that you need to do. But you don't have to do it by choice. And I think that's important, you know, understanding what your weaknesses are allows you to make the choice of whether or not you want to focus on improving those weaknesses. A lot of times we do. A lot of times we can overcome some of our shortcomings. We can overcome fears that we have, skill deficits that we might have. Some people aren't athletic, so you might not be able to overcome some of the athletic weaknesses that you have. but putting forth that honest effort. You know, we go back to the integrity side of the pillars of self-esteem. As long as you're making your best effort, then you're true to yourself. You still might not be able to physically do the things that other athletes can do, but that doesn't mean you don't try. You try. If you fail, you fail, but at least you know you tried your best. And that alone is a self-esteem boost right there is putting forth that effort. 
So I think that was really all we wanted to talk about today. We'll we'll take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll get your closing thoughts and shout outs, and then we'll sum up the show. Go for your closing remarks. Okay, even though I kind of gave my recommendations for what to do, I'm going to kind of sum everything up. So, um, I definitely say that if you are in a similar situation that I was with lower self-esteem, I'd say that you need to make the effort. You can't let other people do it for you, but other people can help. Um, I'd say that you need to try and take action for things, and you need to try to improve the spots you're weak in. I've improved them, and you can see now I'm much more confident, and I have much higher self-esteem than back then. Of course, it's not perfect. Understand you're not going to be perfect, but you need to at least respect yourself and respect everything that comes with you, and understand that you're not going to be perfect, but you're good enough. Okay, I think that's a great way to sum up the, su- the topic today. Before we go, I would uh, once again invite folks to subscribe to the podcast. Uh, our podcasts go live Monday mornings at 8, and if you subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, TuneIn, Amazon, or anywhere, you'll get the podcast as soon as they go live. I would also invite folks to reach out, give us your feedback, tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, if there's any topics you'd like us to cover on the show. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can hit us on Twitter at insights underscore things. We are on Instagram at instagram.com slash insights into things. You can get high res versions of our videos on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. We do stream six days a week on Twitch at twitch.tv slash insights into things. We'd appreciate you subscribing to us there. You can get audio versions of the podcast at podcast.insightsintoteens.com or you can get us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast or you can get all that stuff on our website at insightsintothings.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights in Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, and Insights in the Tomorrow, our monthly podcast, hosted by you and my brother, Sam. Well done. That's it for today. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.